All right, it looks like we're live. I am squeaking in very last minute today. So I'm just gonna give a minute here for it to catch up and make sure it looks good. Hello, everybody. Wow, everybody's waiting and hanging out today. So excited to see you all. I would say hi to everybody, but there's way too many names there for me to go ahead and catch up with. So let me have just a minute here and I will uh, make sure I get this working on my phone and then I turn, I was trying to um, silence everything else to make sure I don't have any unexpected sounds or noises and I had forgotten to do that. So I'm going to do that now so we're all ready to go. I am super excited to craft with you guys today. I have um, kind of a fun um, inspired card. I'm gonna tell you where I got my color inspiration and we'll see if it works. I'm optimistic, um, but I'm hoping it'll turn out kind of like I'm envisioning in my head. So it's kind of a different color combo than I've seen with this set yet. Um, we're gonna, yep, Dahlia's, I see lots of you already seen. I'm going to use um, one of the beautiful um, layering stencil and stamp sets, and I have kind of a fun, bright, happy color combo I'm going to be playing with. So, all right, now that we have everything working, it's rolling, we're on here. I saw Leah on there already. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of things before we kick off and get started here on... Um, on our crafting. So first things first, if you are new and this is your first live, we would love to welcome you. So please leave a little comment and let us know this is your first live. Um, and I'll do my best to see and say hi. I, a lot of times I catch them as I go by, but I don't necessarily have time. Uh, but please know that you are welcome and we love having you here. Um, and then a couple of things, especially if you're new, we give away a $15 gift card every uh, week um, for each of these lives. So the way you enter for that is simply by leaving comments, um, using the chat, uh, answer a question if you see somebody, um, leave one that you know the answer to, leave questions if you have any, um, just interact in the chat. Another way you can win is somewhere right, let's see, I always get this wrong, somewhere, I think it's right over somewhere here-ish, um, there's a little share button. If you can click that and take that link and share it in an email, um, share it in a group, share it, um, a message to a friend, um, however you'd like to do that, and then come back and leave a comment and let us know that you shared that. I see two newbies here today, Bridget and Pamela. Welcome to both of you. We're so excited to have you with us today. Um, and then one other thing we really, really appreciate is if you can hit that little thumbs up button that just helps um, get the video out and a little more reach so more people can find it and join us. Um, Leah is behind the scenes, so under that pink fresh name today, that is my partner in crime, Leah, who is going to be behind the chat. Um, as I'm crafting and going and working here, sometimes I miss those questions, and she does an awesome job of catching any I miss. If for some reason both of us miss them, um, please just leave it again. I promise we're not ignoring you. It just sometimes it flies by. And speaking of which, I see a few more first time, Claudia and Rosita. And Carol, there we go. I knew we saw another new one there too. So excited to have you guys all uh, joining us for the first time today. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, one final thing. If you have any questions about what I'm using today, everything is linked in the video description. Um, we've started doing that to make it a little bit easier so you can find it now um, or you can catch it after the live. It'll be available there for replay. So if you're wondering, what color ink did she use again or which stamp set or which dye was that? Um, just check that out and it's down there. Um, feel free to ask again. If I see it, I'll try and answer. Um, but if you do um, need that as a reference and we miss it, then please go ahead and check down there. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna get the camera switched around here and see if we can get started here with our crafting. And I see lots of you are super excited about Create and Connect. That is coming up very soon. Packages are out. We're revving up for a fun weekend and feeling excited about that. Okay, so here is what we're going to use today. I'll lay out my um, stuff a little bit here. So this is a previous release. Um, a good bit of the new release is sold out. Some of it's not, but we've used a lot of it. And... I kind of got inspired here this past weekend. Um, some friends of ours, there's 
um, they have a little girl, she's about five years old and she wore the cutest little dress to church on Sunday. And it had a yellow, it was just like a bright, bold, happy yellow background with bright pink flower. It was just such, such a fun pattern and design, just the fabric on it that I totally went, oh, I want to make a card like that. And I was trying to think um, how we could do that. So and it popped in my head, the fun darling dahlia set. There's a clink stamp and the layering stencils. And one of the unique things about it is not only does it have the layering stencils for on the flowers, it's got the layering stencils for the background. So I can't girl. So it's gonna be a little distress, had roses, I just kind of tweaking it to my own. I, I, I love um, getting inspiration in kind of places. And I that happens a lot that I'll be out and about and see something. Oh, I need to make a card with that. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to move some stuff out of the way here because we're going to start with um, stamp set. And this is going to be a little bit hard to see. I'm just going to apologize in advance um, because I really wanted to keep that no line look. Um, so I'm going to heat emboss it in white so I can match up and line up with that. I know it's going to be a little hard to see, but I think as it comes together, you'll be able to pick it up and kind of get an idea. So I'm going to get my, this is just a half panel of eight and a half by 11. I like the extra wiggle room on these cling stamps to be able to kind of hold everything in place and have lots of space to work. If you want to conserve, you can um, be a little stingier on your cardstock, but I think your cardstock's not that expensive and that's just be able to work with. Okay. Well, I use my power tool nice and generously. And I could, um, there we go. I'm going to make sure I have lots of powder on there. I could go ahead and um, stamp it in a different color to line up and then heat emboss afterwards, but I really want to be able to see how it's looking as it comes along. And um, having that white is going to be, I think, just kind of helpful in that. And I'm going to stamp this several times because your embossing ink doesn't show up that well, so it's really hard to see where you're stamping, and I want to make sure I don't miss any spots. Um, and also when you use the powder tool like that, a lot of times I've noticed that it does keep the powder from sticking where you don't want to, but it's a little extra work for the, um, stamp image to stick on there as well. So I'm just going to make sure I've got that on there and I can, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I actually can see, um, the stamp image there. So I think I've got it pretty good and I'm gonna go ahead. I'll worry about clearing bossing ink is easy to clean. So I'm just gonna clean this a little bit later. So I'm gonna set that out of the way. And we'll get some embossing powder. Oh, so it looks like maybe my internet dipped for a second. So white embossing powder, this is just, Detail white embossing powder. This one happens to be from Simon Says Stamp, just because it's what I have, but any fine detail white embossing powder should work really well for this. Make sure you get plenty on there. And again, white is a little trickier because it's harder to see. Make sure that you've got it on there, but it looks Got good coverage. Oh dear. I can't even tell you guys how many times I've done this in a live and made a mess with my embossing powder. Bear with me for just a second here while I clean that up. And note to solve the time to look over and check. Um, not when you're closing the lid on your embossing powder. <laughs> At least it's not too bad to clean up, right? I'm just gonna be thankful with that. And I have wet wipes handy. There's probably better ways to clean it up. But... And I have this thing about 
hating embossing powder on my desk, so. All right. And Zoom will probably mute me here while I heat emboss this and turn my heat gun on, so. Okay, and like I said, that's probably completely invisible to you. You might see the little reflection of the design on there. Um, yes, embossing. Oh, goodness, and don't sneeze over your embossing container. Yes, that sounds like very good advice. And as much as I, like I said, I hate the feeling of powder on my desk. That's one of my weird little, um, little quirks. Right, and I think I'm seeing the occasional internet dip. I don't know why it's doing that today. Sorry, and hopefully it just kind of settles itself back in quickly. Okay, this is gonna be also a tiny bit trickier for me to line up just because the white embossing powder is gonna wanna hide on there really well. Okay. Okay. And I think it'll, you'll start to see. That's what I'm hoping. I'm going to stir here with our ink blending with sparkling rose. Seeing lots of different ways to clean up. And you know what, guys? I just did these. Turn that around backwards. That works much better when you do it the right way. Get my uh, microfiber cloth there. Blending. Can you guys see how beautifully that starts to show up on there. And I'm going to die cut this so this panel is obviously quite a bit bigger than what I'm going to be die cutting and using. So one little trick when I'm not using the alignment guides, I actually purposely go over on my first stencil. That gives me kind of a new alignment guide to use with the additional layers of the stencils. So just a little tip for you there that really works for me. I love already this bright, bold, happy color. So I don't know if it'll come through, but one thing I'm wondering about with um, the internet issues, we've upgraded so we're streaming in a higher quality. Um, so it might be something you find helpful to adjust the quality down to a lower level because it might be streaming at too high of a level on everyone else's end. We kind of wanted to have that option of that better quality, but if you're having trouble with it coming through, now I'm purposely hitting kind of some of the outer edges and corners here. I just want to get a little variation in the color. So I'm kind of hitting some spots to deepen the color there. I don't know. 
that'll show on there, but I just want, I don't want it all one. I kind of want to add some gradation. Clean the stencil off a little bit and do our first magic reveal. And there is our first layer. Hold that up so you can kind of see. See how those flowers are just popping. Okay, let's move on. I'm just gonna go right through the order of the stencils. So our next stencil is gonna be stencil number two. And as you can see on here, I've made my second layer easier now because all I had to do was line it up on that over inking that I purposely put on there. Okay, that shows up so you can see. Uh, timeline for ink cube bundles. I'm not entirely sure. Get full size really soon ish, but I don't know about the ink cubes. Next one in our pink color family. And again, hitting some spots to get some deeper color variation. It's a little easier. Okay, clean this off. Here we'll move on. Oh, I love that. Look at how fun that is, you guys. All that texture that adds this stamp or this layering stencil is so super duper fun. Okay, I'm pretty much gonna fit this in to that spot there and just double check that everything seems to be lining up. That looks pretty much perfect, so. Use my tape there, and it's time to move on to the green. Starting with grassy knoll. I I don't remember the last time I did white heat embossing with the stamp and the and. I love the, just how it like magically, it's almost like um, when you were a kid, do you ever do the, uh, book had a pen and magically or thing. I feel like that's what this is like. And now we've added those lovely leaves on there. So one more layer on the leaves and then we have the background to create and then we will be all done with this. Once again, pop that just into those notches that we created with the ink. And we're gonna move up to the next green, which will be key lime. Happy Debbie, I like that description. That's kind of what my goal was on my color combos that I picked today color combo. Okay, that's all on there. This is a fairly easy one. The yellow Roxanne will be the next layer. It's going to be for the background because this stencil set gives us a stencil for the background. And you know what even is fun? You don't even have to move on. If you like it just like this and don't want the background, you can quit there or you can leave the leaves plain, for example, once you add the background, but you know background. So of course we're doing the background today. I'm so excited to see how this comes out and if it works. Sunshine, I went with the brightest, happiest yellow I could think of in this one. So let's see how, how it works. 
going all out bold on this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna skimp on that yellow because I really want this background just to pop on there. I'm laying it on thick today. Sometimes I'll be kind of delicate on a background, but this one called for bold and beautiful. Okay, are we ready for this? Oh, Jeannie's just so, this is the first time you've seen. If you watch our lives anymore, you will see them almost every week. We are pretty much addicted to these things. All right, you guys ready? The magic reveal moment. Ta-da! Oh my goodness, that makes me so happy. I hope you guys can see just how bright and happy. I know we need we need more of these with the background, but this one right here on this set is so, so brilliant to be able to do that background. Oh, that I could just sit and stare at that all day, you guys. That makes me so happy. I love that it worked out like I was hoping. Sometimes it just, it works. So let's go ahead. I'm getting some stuff off my desk here right to make bread. A little there. Let's go ahead and get a panel die cut out of this. We're going to use, oops, right on the way out of the bag. Stitched rectangles to cut a panel. I hate to even trim anything off the sides on this one just because it's so pretty but it's gonna be worth it for me it's like mm, do i though do i And here we are. Esther, copy away. I am not ever offended by that, I promise. Okay, and we barely, we barely cut anything off of that, so we did good. Away, and then let's let's start moving on here with the rest of the card and what I have in mind. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to use a white card base because that really just needs to pop on that background. And then, because again, I really wanted to focus on that background. Um, Pamela, yes, right now this currently is the only set that does allow a background. Okay. So I've already die cut a few of the ornate oval frames. I have three of them die cut out because I'm pretty sure I want to stack these all up to get, um, get lots of dimension here. I'm just going to kind of lay that on there and see because I have pretty sure I really just like that in the white, but I did also cut it from a mirror gold cardstock because I want to ponder that option as well. Pretty sure we're just going to wait on that one. I feel like this, mm, I don't know, the gold is fun, but okay. And then I have the Phrase Builder U die set. And I did a little pre die cutting on this one too because I wasn't entirely sure. I've got the U R, and I'm going to use a secondary sentiment from Simply Sentiments U. I added a vellum. Just cut. So, but that. I'm really just liking the white. I don't think the gold is going to be what I want to add on there today. I think just the, all that bright color. It really just needs that pop and sing of white. I know the gold frame is beautiful. I just, I don't know. I almost feel like it's too much on that background and it takes away from that 
bright, springy, happy background. So I'm gonna stick with that, but I do need to adhere these frames together. So let's pull out that liquid glue and just get these adhered together. I did get the sentiments adhered, but I didn't get these ones together yet. I even thought about changing and doing the letters out of a different color, but again, that background is so just bold and happy that it really just kind of needs to be the star of the show and the white kind of lets it do that for me. So I think I'm gonna stick with that just cause I don't wanna detract from that. And I really do love white space on a card, but so I think adding the white frames and the white wording is gonna help kind of bring that white space back in with that beautiful, happy, bold background. And then to pick our secondary sentiment here. That's right. And Leah did just mention, I forgot um, the phrase builders are 25% off still this week for a couple more days. So this is one of them. This is the phrase builder U and it's got several of those words in there. I have another little piece that a black one that I have die cut out and saved for another time, but it's got all these lovely words in here. And there's a few other of those sets as well. Um, they're super helpful and super versatile. And I think, I think I'm going to do that my favorite notification because I can just skip stamp bar, just kind of do some selective stamping, or I could do you are my person. I actually kind of like that if I just stamp the end half of that. that. You are my person. Let's go for that one. Let's try that here. And I'm going to just stamp this little black with my misty. Again, I'm going to just selectively only stamp part of that. I could also trim it out, but I think it'll be easier just to only stamp the part that I want there. And not that I need much. I'm going to just mask off the part of this just to make sure. There we go. Now, when I ink it up, I won't ink up that I don't want to stamp. It'll just kind of help make sure that I don't mess it up and stamp it there. I can reuse that same little bit of post-it tape. And you could also do stamp story and just cut it, uh, cut it down. But that worked really well. I'm going to call that good. Quick little shot of stamp cleaner on there to clean that detail black off before it has a chance to dry on there and make it harder to get it off. Put that stamp set away too, just because sentiments like easy to lose. We're getting close to the end and it'll just be time to add a little bit of bling to this and adhere all of those layers together. I actually thought about stamping this not in detail black, but again, I really think that crisp, uh, simple sentiment will just pop that much better down to a nice thin little strip there. Now I'm trying to decide, I might just pop it, I might pop it behind that frame and go all the way across. I kind of like that. If I can get it in there just right. I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna to get that even and square. 
I'm going to make use of the grid on my mat. I'm going to tape the top and bottom. I made sure and lined up that top and bottom that I could see the line through there. And now I can slide it in, fill our sentiment in up here. Kind of get that placed where I want. And this way I know my sentiment's gonna be straight because I can use the grid that's on there as a placeholder. Tape it in place. And now we can add that little bit of liquid glue in the back and I'll hold it right in place where I want it there. Also add like a glue dot or something else, but I think that'll work adequately. Let's just a quick little trim that extra off. I'm gonna still leaving the tape on there for a minute while I do that. I want that to pop off back past the edge of the frame. There we go. Little trimming. And it looks like it's sticking down and the glue is doing its job. So it's doing exactly what I want it to. So let me get that on there. It's gonna work perfect. Okay. I'm gonna add, finally I spent some time recently and created more of these full panels of foam adhesive. So just fun foam backed with white adhesive tape. Um, we've showed that a few times and uh, kind of our favorite way for big full panels if you want a really solid, base to put down. Okay. I'm gonna pop my head up over here so I make sure and get this on here square and straight. Will not be moving. All right, I think we got that. And then I was just because I stacked up three of these, I was just gonna put them straight on. But now that I've added my sentiment behind there, I think I want the extra little bit of height that some foam adhesive is gonna give me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add little pre-made strips. And Kathy, sign back first time. I probably missed some other first timers along the way. So if I did, welcome to everyone else. But since I saw you there, I thought I'd give a quick shout out along the way. And with foam adhesive, if you peel off both um, sides of the adhesive uh, backing, it'll curl right around whatever shape within reason that you want, which is really helpful when you're um, curving it around an oval frame or some such thing. So that little extra hole there. this background would be super duper fun uh, to create a like a full panel shaker card too with that background and then adding some sparkle over the top would be just kicking it up even one more notch that would be super fun okay let's get this adhered down centered nice and even Get my time here to make sure I get it just right. And then we're just gonna add this in the bling. And another first time you were hello to Charlene. Okay, I have to adhere, I have the um, sentiment here has three layers of the white cardstock all um, adhered together. So it's nice and thick and dimensional but I now need to add it. I cut the, the shadow layer with vellum. It's one of my favorite things to do with um, word dies is cut that shadow layer. Cause you could put this just directly on, but that vellum adds just that little hint of softness, which is 
So fun on these. Use a glue pen also if you prefer to glue these down. I'm just using the liquid glue. I like that little smidge of wiggle room and this glue dries um, clear really well. So whatever squishes out around there is not gonna show um, really at all. You are, okay. add these on there. And welcome to Amy, first time. I'm trying to catch them all as they flow by. I feel like I probably miss a lot of them usually later in the live because I'm scrambling to make sure I get everything done, but I think I expected the stenciling to take longer than it actually did. So we ended up with more time to spare than I expected. But have no fear, we've still got uh, our bling embellishment to put on here. I actually don't have it on the listing, but I'm almost pondering um, one of the artistic bows down here. But I'll think about that a little bit later. But let's get some bling pull out of here. And I hadn't decided yet whether to use jewels or crystals. Debating on, almost thinking some of these tucked in there will be kind of fun. I haven't fully decided yet. I think the yellow might be especially fun because it'll help enhance that. If we want to mix color, just do all the same color. You know what, I think I'm gonna do all the yellow because the pink just doesn't pop as much and I don't think the green's gonna show as much either. So we're just gonna go all yellow for our embellishments here. Just gotta get out the three sizes and I'll put a little row of all the sizes tucked right at the top there. And then one at the bottom as well. Medium and another small. I think I like them um, a little more spread out like I did on the bottom there. So I'll adjust those before I put them down. Oh, there, I did have a little straggler. all set into place where I want them first. I will pull out my liquid glue and tear them down. I like to make sure I'm happy with the placement before I commit and stick them down. This is my focus spot, sorry. There we go. All right, and I like that. And let's go ahead and tear those down and that'll be the perfect finishing little bit of sparkle on here. Now, you might notice as I put these on, I don't know if it'll show up again. The higher quality video sometimes shows more. It feels like the white glue kind of dulls the sparkle when you stick it down. The beautiful thing is it's gonna dry clear. So once it dries, these will go back to their same sparkly selves that they were before. And I hear these ones at the top. I just realized now that I put my bling where I did, I probably won't go in and um, 
add a bow like I pondered because it's not necessarily going to be a good spot for that. Centering them like this in there how I want. I feel like this is the Leah way of putting uh, crystals on. It's kind of my channeling my inner Leah moment on here. Okay, let's pull this up a little closer. Very simple. I mean, you could add a bunch more layers and things on here, but I absolutely love how all the focus is just on the background. Just for fun, in case anyone's still pondering about it, I'm gonna show what it looks like there with that gold frame on there. So you could totally step it up and add that on if it was something that you like, but this way you get to kind of see both. And like I said, I, <laughs> I'm torn. I really like it both ways, but I really think I like that pop of crisp white on it on this one. So I'm going to gonna leave it that one. I might remake the same card and do that. Um, Patricia, the placement tool I'm using this. It's, um, just, it's called an embellishment wand. There's a few different kinds of them you can get, and they are super helpful when you're putting um, embellishments down. I feel like they're magic. I, I think when I first got them and I told people about them, like, okay, I didn't invest in them for a while, but once I did, I was like, oh my goodness, it's like, it's magic. I don't know how else to explain. Probably some smart science behind it, but it sure felt like magic the first time I used it. Okay, I think we have on a record setting time today, wrapped up and finished this. So I'm gonna swap the camera around and we'll give Leah a minute or two um, to go ahead and select a winner. I'll show you this one more time from my front facing camera. I really hope that white embossing shows up well enough that you can see. I think for the most part, my desktop camera is much better. But thank you everyone for joining me today for with um, my white heat embossing. I knew that was gonna be a little harder to see, but. I really do think it was worth it at the end. I'm really glad I stuck with that. Um, a couple of things. This is our only card making live. We're working really hard um, to get ready for Create and Connect. So I know we're busy with that. Um, I believe next week, Leah and I will, it'll, um, it'll be one of the next two weeks we'll be doing a sneak peek of our May release, which is kind of pushed towards the end of the month right now, but um, we might even get two weeks of sneak peeks in. I'm not sure yet. So um, we'll play with that and let you know a little sooner, but we, one of us will be for sure doing YouTube live if we don't do it together next week. And then, um, yeah, we should have be back maybe to Facebook live next week. We might end up not being able to do that um, depending on um, how the week goes. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. So that, that's sweet of you to say. We appreciate that. Okay. And I see today's gift card winner is Amy Hart. Congratulations. Big yay. Uh, email Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com to claim your prize. Her name is just L-E-A, no H on the end. And give her two to three days to get back to you. Um, she gets a lot of emails, so it takes a little time to catch up and find all those. And we are, we're done. I kind of feel bad that we finished early. Like I should have gone and made a bonus card or something like that, but um, that's okay. We're just going to be okay with that. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you have a good rest of your week and hopefully we'll see you on Friday for Natalie's Scrapbook Life. Even if you're not a scrapbooker, they're super fun and always very inspiring. So um, if nothing else, it might be something you can use on a card or it might make you want to pull out and scrapbook like it does for me every week. So, all right. Have a great week, everyone. We will see you soon.